Okay, hi, uh, my name is John Sullivan and I teach in the Media and Communication Department at Muhlenberg College. And uh, I collaborated with two colleagues who teach at Cedar Crest College, which is less than a mile from Muhlenberg. Uh, so it was very close geographically, but strangely students from both campuses actually have little to no interaction with one another. You would think that there would be more interaction, there just really isn't. And both of the uh, Muhlenberg and Cedar Crest also have um, really nicely well-developed uh, communication programs. Ours is called Media Communication, theirs is just called Communication. So it made it a kind of nice uh, a pairing for this TECL grant to do some joint courses and coursework between those two institutions. So I had two other colleagues, uh, Jim Brancato, who's the chair uh, of the Communication Department at um, Cedar Crest College, and Elizabeth Ortiz, who's assistant professor in the department uh, there at Cedar Crest as well. So next next slide. So we got together and we just wanted to talk about what kinds of course experiences we share and we selected two different courses that we share across both campuses. And these are this was largely just serendipity. Both of us offer courses in relatively the same types of material. So um, so the first, what we decided was that so that we could involve all three of us in the grant, uh, I teamed out a course in the fall, last fall, with uh, Elizabeth Ortiz, an introductory course called Media Literacy. And then just this past spring, I teamed taught a course with Jim Brancato, a more advanced course um, that I typically teach and that he teaches as well called Media Industries. So we had two different course experiences. I team taught both experiences, one in the fall, one in the spring, and each one of them taught one in the fall and one in the spring. Um, looking back on it, I probably should have just done one course rather than try and blend two courses in a single year. But um, so we really jumped in at, at the deep end and there was some flailing uh, as a result. So um, one of our goals was to just kind of develop these two courses and to facilitate collaboration across uh, both campuses for both faculty and students. The faculty collaboration, uh, spoiler alert, went wonderfully. The student collaboration <laughs> struggled uh, mightily. Uh, but we wanted to engage students in deeper learning about critical media literacy uh, via a number of kind of modules and online uh, videos and tasks that we had them complete. Um, we also wanted to encourage students to learn and master digital tools to create digital projects. And as a kind of global goal to increase uh, cross-campus collaboration in pedagogy curriculum, and in particular special events programming. So in the fall, um, there was a, uh, something called Media Literacy Week that uh, Cedar Crest College typically has. So we used the course as an opportunity to highlight that uh, event. And then we had events scheduled at both Muhlenberg and Cedar Crest campuses. And students traveled to both campuses for that week-long series of events around the topic of media literacy. So next slide. So our original goal was to basically have a kind of um, it was a two day a week course. Uh, one initial hurdle was that just because of scheduling, uh, Cedar Crest's course was scheduled on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Muhlenberg's was on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we also found out two weeks before class that Cedar Crest's uh, academic calendar starts a week earlier than Muhlenberg's and ends a week earlier. So we had all these you know, fascinating logistical challenges <laughs> <laughs> that cropped up at the last minute. Uh, but the idea was to have separate uh, class lectures experiences on one day out of the week and then the second day to have students engage with one another in an online space or doing online activities, participating in forums in some way. In other words, the classes would combine in the online space for kind of virtual class for one day out of the two days out of the week. So we originally envisioned for a 50-50 split that half of the class would be face-to-face -face and half the class would be online. Um, as we began to encounter some of the challenges that students faced in the online uh, environment, we began to ramp that down so that it ended up being more like 40% of the course was online by the time we got to the end of the fall semester. During the spring semester, we dramatically ramped that down even more and had about 30% of the course online and 70% of the course face-to-face. -face. Um, we learned from one semester to the next about the difficulties. Mm -hmm. So that was the kind of the idea. Uh, next slide. The first major technological challenge we had is because the, both campuses have different LMS environments. Thankfully at Muhlenberg we have a kind of test environment for Moodle running on our server, so we use that. 
and having a single learning management system environment for both campuses was absolutely invaluable. Uh, students could check it, everyone had uh, access to the same things at the same time. Um, they were able to interact with the environment. It was sufficiently robust that we were able to input lots of different online activities within the LMS itself and not send students to far flung websites to do these activities. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a big plus to have a shared environment. And now actually for cohorts that are going to be doing this kind of integrated learning for next year, I think both Cedarcrest and Muhlenberg have decided to move to Canvas as their LMS tool and that's going to make that so much more easier uh, to, to do this. So next slide. This is just one example of the kind of activities that we had students do. So, for example, on the Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday, there was a class that was all about how audiences are constructed by uh, market research firms. And so on the Thursday, we had students uh, go to the Nielsen, is one of the largest uh, audience uh, firms that measure television and radio audiences. Uh, so we had the students go to the Nielsen website and there's a place where you can look up by your own zip code and then it will show you the types of consumers that they've constructed in that particular zip code. Mm -hmm. And then we actually, so we had them search your own zip code so it was personally relevant to them. And then we had them to sort of search some other zip codes because a lot of the zip codes that our students are from, it's not Beverly Hills 90210, but it's close, mm -hmm. right? They're suburban New Jersey zip codes. So then we gave them a zip code for downtown Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And then they looked to see how the Nielsen company was constructing consumers within that zip code. And the contrast was pretty uh, interesting. So this was one of my favorite activities that they did over the course of the semester. So this was an example of a kind of a flipped activity. Uh, next one. And then we had uh, students engaging in, so this, as part of this activity, they would do this activity and then post what they saw. Um, and what they thought about the fact that their hometown was being constructed in this particular way by uh, a marketing company. And then each of us would respond to students. So this, here's my response. I blacked out the student's name so you can't see the name of the student, but you can see here's my response to the student in an online environment. So that represented a kind of uh, different way of learning and to expand what, was the, what they read about in the textbook. Uh, next slide. Um, my colleague and I, Professor Ortiz, uh, and I also got creative with some, uh, we did video introductions of ourselves at the beginning of the semester um, as a way to kind of introduce ourselves to students. Um, that's one of the ways that we kind of leverage the online space. Next one. During the spring semester, uh, thanks to uh, a session that I, that I went to at DeSales University all about in, in implementing video into the classroom, I, we really got, uh, Jim Bricado and I really got into using this um, online service called Zaption that allows you to overlay videos, either from YouTube or your own videos, with interactive information, whether it's a quiz or uh, a response, a free, a free writing response you ask students to do, or whether it's creating links to other websites. Uh, the video freezes and a screen overlay goes just exactly like this. Um, and students are asked not just to passively consume the video information, but they have to actually enter in some information that allows them to think more deeply about it. And then the nice thing about Zaption, next slide, is that on the back end, we get um, analytics about what students actually did and how they understood and processed this online video. So it tells us things like how much of the video they actually watched, how many of the questions they actually answered, Okay, so this student only answered two of the five questions that were up there. Um, it tells us uh, how many times they stopped and restarted the video. So mm -hmm. it allowed us to see, for example, if a lot of the students weren't were getting beyond the, the eighth or ninth minute of the video, um, that told us something interesting about um, how much our students are willing to engage in videos outside of class. Uh, so we kind of learned the hard way that the max uh, attention length for any kind of online video for students is 10 minutes or less, <laughs> and typically less. So that required so a lot of changing on our, on our, on our part um, midway through the semester. Next slide. So uh, in, during the spring semester, uh, we also had our students blog about different media industries. So we also engaged in this kind of uh, WordPress blogging 
to have them think about different media industries and to talk about that and then integrated that into our classroom discussion. These are just a couple of examples of some of the ways in which we use online tools to help advance students' learning in the class. So we've got some, um, I've got some success stories. I really learned the hard way about a lot of other things that didn't work as well that uh, we can certainly talk about in the question and answer. Uh, 